So I've just completed the North Downs Way 100 Centurion event over Saturday and Sunday. It's now Monday night. I'm absolutely shattered to the point where standing up in front of this camera is uh, hurting my legs. So I've had a nice recovery day. I've relaxed, had a day off, so I'm one of the lucky ones who can do that. Um, so good luck to anyone who didn't and had to go to work today. Well played. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to put a vlog out there. I'm going to talk about sort of the good things, what went right for me and what went wrong. And hopefully that kind of uh, gives you a bit of insight into the race. If you're thinking about doing it or you did do it, um, yeah, just this is how I kind of went. I took my GoPro with me as well, and I'm going to try and post, post a uh, vlog about that. But I've got to say, I've looked at some of the footage, it's pretty shaky, and carrying GoPro around for 100 miles, it was hard work. So, um, yeah, excuse that when it does come out, but check out one of my videos, it's probably going to come out in a couple of weeks by the time I get around to doing it. Anyway, so what went right and what went wrong? So, let's go for the positives first. I'll put my buckle down. Um, I didn't do as well as I did last year time wise uh, last year I did it in under 24 hours this year my plan was to do it in 22 hours and I thought that was achievable but unfortunately what what didn't sort of help me at all was I got a cold about three or four days before and it was quite a nasty one and as you can hear I've pretty much lost my voice so I felt rough probably two or three weeks while training prior to the race. I had a bit of a tight chest and I kind of knew something was up. One of the kids brought back a, um, a virus from school and yeah, I just knew something was going on and then obviously you taper and as everyone says, once you relax the body like going on holiday, you catch something. So yeah, I got my cold. So I was a bit of a shivering wreck on Friday and so I should have really pulled out but hey, you know, you've paid your money, you want to go and do it. You don't want to let your friends down because I was running with one of my friends. And yeah, you just want to, you know, just go and get it done. So that's what I did. I turned up and yeah, I was fine. I woke up in the morning. Yeah, a bit, bit tired, a bit, you know, but hey, it's the, the morning before a race. You know, you're going to, or the morning of the race and you're going to feel pretty rough anyway. Pretty weird. It's up early. I was up at half past three. Got a registration, forgot my plastic cup, um, which was a bit of a nightmare. I don't know why. I had everything laid out, all set up. So that was a bit of a stressful thing. Um, but let's talk about the good things. So nutrition wise, I did really well. Um, throughout the whole race, I took Tailwind. Uh, probably you know all about that, but this is it. It uh, comes in sticks. Um, I said to myself, I would take one of these in between each aid station. So each aid station was 13 aid stations, and the longest one's about 10 and a half miles, I think. So you're probably running or walking for sort of, for me, about two hours maximum. So anyway, one of these has got 200 calories in, so I drank one of these each time. So I went through about 13 of these, which is quite a lot, but I didn't, this time I didn't get sick of it, which is I was really pleased about. I also ate, took some potatoes, um, put salt in them, and I had a bag, um, when I started a bag um, in my drop bag, and then another small bag of potatoes, which I didn't touch in my drop bag at Detling as well. So I did the potatoes. You also get goo gels. Um, they're very generous. Obviously, the uh, Centurion is sponsored by Goo, so you can take as many goos as you want. But I did about three of them. I'm, I'm not a favourite of them, but you know they're okay. Goo gels. Um, one thing I did do right was it was going to be warm, and I think the heat. The weather wasn't forecasted to be hot, and when you looked at the weather forecast, I thought it was going to be quite cloudy. And so I didn't think it was going to be that hot, but told in the morning that it was going to be up to 24 degrees and that's a shade temperature, isn't it? So yeah, in the sun and there's some long fields there you have to run through. So in the sun, it's going to be pretty warm. So I took my salt tablets, which are left over from Marathon de Sable. Um, probably took about 10 to 15 of these. Just take sort of a couple each time I drink a bottle, but you know, I slipped up a little bit, but my nutrition was good. Um, and then at the aid stations, they're all fantastic so there's loads of different types of food you got fruit um, I don't go near citrus but I did eat some watermelon um, there were little sandwiches and I actually got into my cheese sandwiches so they were quite nice I managed to force a few down even in Detling after running 80 miles I managed to get them down me so just one or one and a half so that was really good um, what else did I eat at the uh, knock halt at the 50 miles stop that's the one where yeah, after 50 miles, you can get changed, sort yourself out, um, which I'll come on to a bit later. Um, 
they gave you pasta in this tomato sauce and I really didn't want to eat that, but I saw some guy sitting, sitting down, he just scoffed it down and I just nailed it. I just went, look, just gotta get it down you, even if it might come up in sort of 10 minutes or five minutes, just get it down you and try and just, you know, get a bit of energy back on. So nutrition went really well and I was pretty pleased about that. Um, the other thing which really helped me was cups of tea. <laughs> Amazing. So last year, I didn't know they were doing cups of tea at the aid station. So this year, you know, even though you're offered a cup of tea quite often when you got there, which is brilliant, you go to an aid station, right? And you're shattered. They go, oh, what do you want, mate? You know, come in, sit down, help yourself. What do you want? A tea, coffee, whatever. So I had a cup of tea. I probably had about three or four cups of tea, which were a lifesaver. And what I did, um, I definitely did on the, I don't know which aid station it is, but it's um, probably... Bluebell Hill, maybe Holly Hill, Bluebell Hill, not sure. <laughs> 75, 76 miles in. That there, I had a cup of tea and I took a cup of tea with me, so I just walked with it and sipped it, and that just you know, made me feel a lot better, a lot sort of warmed up, and off I went. But yeah, definitely didn't feel very well. So they say you shouldn't run with a cold from, well, if you're feeling rough from head down, you shouldn't be running if it's like, um, it's basically what I had. So the first 50 miles definitely were really hard, like when you sort of feel fluey symptoms, quite achy. Um, so I had to be bang on my nutrition throughout the whole thing. Obviously drank lots of water as well. So I got that really well, I got that done. You know, I was taking on uh, Tailwind even at the end. So pleased about that, got that right. The other thing which went really well with me is I ran with a friend. Um, I, we've decided to try and run together as much as we could do the first 50 at least. We had a plan. My A plan was, I think I might have said, 22 hours. Um, I finished it in 24.17, which is great, really good. Um, I was really happy with it considering how rough I felt throughout the first 50 miles. I don't know how long it took us to do that, 10 and a half, 11 hours, I don't know. We were try looking to do it in nine and a half hours, so I was way, way behind. So I'd kind of written off the one day, um, but as I started getting into past the 50, I never do this, and I took a couple of paracetamol. There's a news agent just at Knock Hole, and I nipped in, grabbed a couple of paracetamol just to see if it could take the fever down a little bit, because I just felt, you know, all shivery and horrible. So, and that did take the edge off it, so I was really pleased about that. And um, sort of about 10 miles in, I started to feel a lot better, which is the weirdest thing. So when you do 100 miles, you have so many ups and downs, and you know you're gonna get your legs back at some point. So this race, you get to 30 miles, for me anyway, my fitness level, and you are shattered. Your legs are really sore, you're aching, you're walking, and it's not good, not looking good at all. And then you kind of can come out of that. So my best moments, would you believe, were probably 70 to, 70 to 90 miles, which was incredible. And then it just fell apart at the end, the last 10 miles, I was like done in. I, was just, um, I still jogged and ran, but I still walked a lot, and I knew the time was ticking. So... But running with a friend was really good and he took a pacer, he had a pacer with him as well and that was fantastic. So we get to see a, his pacer, so I enjoyed that. And then when we got to Rootum, he picked up his pacer and we ran. So um, shout out to them, they know who they are. So uh, cheers guys, it was real, real good buzz and, and you know, really helped me get through the bad times because I definitely reckon I would DNF'd after 50, even before that, because I just thought, oh no, I'm gonna do more damage than good. But yeah, look, I'm good, so um, yeah. You know, feeling a bit rough now, but we'll, we'll be all right. Um, other things which went well for me, which I don't usually do, is I listen to music, especially for the 100 milers. Um, I've got my tunes on, and I love that. I put a bit of Underworld on, and uh, it was great. It got right in the zone when I was running, and you're in the dark, you're in the forest, you know, you, you, it's quite mad, and you're seeing things, and it's, it's cool. So I uh, got right into my tunes, so that really helped me. Um, what else? Uh, use one of these. So I run with a UD vest. Um, you've seen them out there. Nothing nothing uh, you need to really know about that. But I flip belt. So I got this on Amazon. It's quite good. Um, it's just got holes all the way around it. And I stuck my phone into that. And that was quite handy. I run with that anyway generally because I like to run with my phone now just in case something happens. And I put my headphones in as well. So it's quite easy to take out, get your... Um, camera if you want to take some photos things like that so I, I did that this time that I recommend that that was really good um, armbands so a lot of people I was as I was feeling quite chilly when I left the aid stations I was freezing especially at night oh my god Detling I left and I was like shivering like a wreck now these were a savior um, you didn't have to get your jacket out in your back of your backpack or anything like that or your, you know your fleece or whatever you had so I just put these on and these were great and they just sit on your arm 
you know, they just sit like that. Jobs are good and they're really helpful. And um, these are for Montaigne, really good. But they are quite useful and if you don't want them, you just roll them down to your, to your wrist and you know, then pop them back up. But that really helped me, so they're a bit of a lifesaver. And then my glasses, again, I don't know, basically I struggle because my eyesight, I don't have very bad eyesight, I have to wear glasses for driving. And I guess this is a good and bad thing. Um, <laughs> When I'm getting older, I've lost, I've lost my eyesight a bit, so reading and stuff is really difficult. Um, so I wore contact lenses, which I can, I never wear them normally, I just wear glasses, but I can just shove contact lenses in and race with them, because I guess you're getting loads of air in your eyes and stuff. And I had them on throughout the whole race. Um, and I wore my, my um, Jolbo glasses, and they're, oh, they've got, um, they, these ones are zebra lights, so is it chromatic? So they change, you know, they darken and lighten in the certain conditions and I can wear them all the time even at night but the problem is my contact lens is that I can't read my watch so I run with a Suunto watch I haven't got it on at the moment but um, I'm like that so it's a bit of a nightmare um, but they work really well and they're, they're a few quid but I, I reckon they are good because you can keep them on throughout the whole night and I did a mountain race a few years back and wore them at night as well so they're, they work well nice little tip um, yeah, so those are the kind of good things. Obviously, the race itself, you know, and everything about the race was fantastic. But some of the bad things, um, which I kind of spoke about already, but obviously running with a cold you just don't want to do, that's not a good thing. Um, what other things went wrong? Uh, UD vest. So I wore my UD vest and I got really bad bruising um, around my ribs and where the bottles were sort of bouncing, I guess. Uh, it was just really uncomfortable and I also saw quite a few runners running in their vests. One guy had like a Salomon vest on and he had like loads of stuff on the back and that was bouncing around and I was kind of thinking I don't think my vest fits me because I do it up and it's too tight um, and then the bottles should they be tight I don't know I don't know it'd be great if anyone can leave any comments and just sort of say is their vest really tight do they get much sort of bounce when they run because I, I suffered really badly in it. I also had a heart rate monitor on um, and that rubbed as well, so, mm, you know, that leads me on to the big problem I had was my Suunto watch. I've got a Suunto Spartan Ultra, it's a cool watch, loved it, had it for quite a few years now, but it ran out of batteries. Now, I forgot, so I didn't forget, take a power pack with you, so at Knockholt, when you get there, um, you can put it in and charge your, um, gosh, see I've just done 100 mile, my mind's gone completely blank. Charge your watch up, that's what I was trying to say. So charge your watch up and off you go again. Now I thought I would set on ultra low, mo ultra settings and then just, you know, it would last. Well, stupid, I don't know why I thought that. Got to sort of 70 miles and uh, yeah, just bing, turned off 69 point something, like it says on Strava. So that was it, had no, had no, um, no watch. Now, that was a bit disconcerting at first, but actually, it was really weird because it worked in my favour. I, I loved it because I had to run 10 miles to say an aid station. I didn't know how far I had to go and I didn't know how far I had to run. I could have asked some people, but it was so strung out. And when I did ask someone, they were gone. They didn't know either. So I thought, Do you know what? Don't worry about it, just run, just run and get there. And it was great. So instead of looking at your watch all the time, going, oh my God, I've only done two hours. I'm oh, sorry, two miles and it's taken me this long. Oh my God, I've got another mile to go. You don't have any of that in your head. You don't have any negativity. Um, unless you're moving really fast, which I don't know, yeah, you know, some guys, girls do out there. Um, with I'm, I'm the other way around. I'm moving really slowly at this point. So I'm just going, oh my God, how, how far have I got to go? So that was really good. So that was a kind of a, a negative turned into a plus, which I was quite chuffed about uh, when I was running. Um, what else? So yeah, watch died. Yeah, so, oh my God, my feet. I've got... Um, New Hawkers, uh, the Evo Mafati from last year, not they've just released some twos out I think now, so they were last year, so I bought some of those and I've worn them probably before I came to the race, uh, about 20, 30 miles. Beautiful, really comfortable. And I've done quite a lot of runs, so my feet are quite hardened, but I wore toe socks and I put zinc oxide cream on and I did that at the beginning of the race as well. And then I got to knock hold, I changed my socks, I put cream on as well there to stop any hot spots. And I didn't have any blisters or knock hold. And then when I finished, I didn't have any problems with my feet, just apart from they hurt from being, you know, absolutely shattered. 
but when I took my socks off at the end, I've got some whopper blisters. Um, I'm going to put, put a shot a shot up of my feet, and there's some whopper blisters now, but none of them burst. But anyway, I'm a bit concerned about that. Bearing in mind I've done MDS previously, and you tape your feet. I'm just wondering if anyone else has got any cream, know of anything else to try and stop this from happening, because I think if I'd carried on running, I mean, yeah, geez, if it was even longer race, then I would have been in all sorts of trouble. So, yeah, that was a bit disappointing. My feet are pretty trashed. Um, but, yeah, so my race, you know, all in all, it was okay. Uh, what have we got else? So now I'm just recovering. So this week I won't really do anything. I may go for a bike ride, just you know, do a little spin to get the legs going. I'll do probably some light Pilates, because I do a lot of that, um, which I love. And yeah, just eat really well. I've eaten a nice sort of stir fry today with rice and um, turmeric in it. So um, I drink nice little turmeric tea. I also have turmeric and oatmeal, that's quite nice. So that's really good for anti-inflammatory. Uh, properties so just eat loads of greens eat really healthy um, yeah I've got a beer I've got a beer up here actually yeah got a beer mm. that's definitely good recovery um, yeah that is good so yeah I'm just recovering really easy obviously got work now so but just trying to keep off my feet elevate the feet as much as possible get some good night's sleep and then just try and ease back into the running. I've got the CCC coming up in uh, three weeks time, so hopefully my feet recover. But I'm not gonna go and race that hard, I'm just gonna go enjoy it, because it's just a beautiful experience. The Chamonix is gonna be awesome. But going back to Centurion running, uh, one thing I found amazing, will always do, is the crew. People who crew, um, they're incredible. I mean, firstly, thank you, Centurion running. Awesome event, love it. Well done, guys. The aid stations, amazing the people in them um really really good really really happy i'm not going to say who but apart from one person was a bit negative on one of the aid stations but that's all and um yeah just they're great and they sit you down they help you out they see you you know if you're in trouble i mean some of the people who run for 30 hours you know and they've never done one of these before they are going to be in all sorts of trouble and you've got to be on it at these aid stations so thank you so much for looking after me and looking after everyone else it's awesome but also the crew when you go past and you're shattered you think of your family you think of yourself quite very emotional very emotional while you're running and you see these people like sitting down with their wives or their husbands and you've got the kids I mean, also during the night the kids are asleep and in the morning when the people are finishing their races, all the kids, and everything, it's fantastic. So well done to people who go out there and crew. It is absolutely amazing. So um, thank you really for um, helping me through it. And uh, it was an awesome event. I'm definitely going to go back and do another 100. Uh, I don't know which one. I might do the A100 next. Yeah. So that's pretty much everything about that. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's hope that helped you. And, you know, good and bad bits. And I'm going to post, as I said, some stuff on the... YouTube, I'm going to put a, yeah, a sort of, uh, probably going to be a 10 minute video about how it went, a GoPro and stuff like that. But yeah, subscribe, leave some comments, you know, hope you enjoy watching, hope that helps out. Cheers.